we're just finishing up a, a really interesting project uh, this week. Uh, this job's been here quite a while. This is a, a special engraved Browning Auto 5. It really has a unique pattern to it, and it is all factory. Uh, when we got it in, it was in pretty rough shape, and uh, some other things had been done to it that uh, we talked about earlier in our, our, our first video. Uh, but if you'll remember, in that first video we did on this gun before we started on it, there was a uh, piece of the receiver that had been cut out. Uh, the gun had been uh, deactivated by the um, Spanish government. Uh, the story behind the gun, and maybe we talked about this in the first video, I don't know, but uh, a man uh, inherited this gun. It was his grandfather's gun. And uh, the uh, Spanish government, before they would let this gun be uh, sent to the United States, deactivated it. They did that by cutting this piece of receiver out and uh, drilling holes in the barrel, uh, welded up the bolt face, and they considered that to be deactivated. Now, in the U.S., the ATF has special ways of deactivating guns where you won't put them back together. Uh, it's on their website. There are certain things you have to do to uh, uh, destroy a firearm uh, to make it uh, good with the ATF. And uh, believe me, when you uh, destroy one the way the ATF wants it done, uh, you won't be putting it back together. But to just cut a piece out of this receiver was not a big deal. Uh, for us, we just uh, found another old junk A5 receiver and cut the piece out and TIG welded this piece back into the receiver. And then our engraver had to go over all the engraving anyway because it was pretty rough. And uh, of course he engraved over this area where uh, we had welded it and all, which uh, hid all of the uh, welding uh, marks that are left. And uh, right now you, you, there's no, no trace of, uh, of that at all. You would never know that that piece of receiver was cut out and removed. Uh, our welder did a great job and our engraver did a wonderful, wonderful job of going over all this engraving. And uh, we finished the wood and uh, the gun is now, if I can kind of show you both sides of it, now ready to go back to the uh, uh, owner. And I'm sure he's going to be quite delighted when he gets it back. Uh, we uh, put a lot of work into it to get it right. The engraving is really, really beautiful, beautiful engraving. The only uh, issue I've got is after we looked at the invoice and the way the job came out, people in the shop said, you really didn't charge enough on that gun. And I think they're probably right. Um, it was probably worth more than what I charged, but hey, I'm okay. I made a little money and I'm fine. And, uh, really proud of the gun. It looks really, really great. So uh, that's uh, one of our little projects that's going out this week. We're glad to get that in the mail and get that out of here. Uh, have a, another little uh, Winchester here that uh, was engraved by uh, one of the local engravers, Nathan Dickinson. Did a really, really pretty job. Uh, we're finishing the wood on it. Uh, but. Uh, the engraving on this gun is really great. Nathan's a great engraver and does a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, that's the one side. Here's the other. Uh, beautiful. I love that gold wire work. That, that's, that's what really excites me. The uh, lever has been uh, case colored. Uh, pretty gun, pretty gun. So we're just doing, uh, doing the wood on it to uh, uh, spruce it up a little bit. I think it had a high gloss finish on it. We're doing more of a satin finish on it, if I recall, to make it look look right. Uh, oh, I went and purchased some uh, uh, items from an old Browning uh, uh, employee who retired years and years ago. I think he's been retired about 28 years or so. And uh, he had a bunch of items he sold me, and then all that uh, that wood and parts that he sold me was uh, some Browning arrows. thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, that goes way back. I couldn't tell you when they did these. Uh, he just threw that kind of in the, uh, uh, with all the parts, and I took them. I don't know why. I don't know what I'll do with that, but, eh, you know, it's interesting stuff. Uh, Browning has made a lot of different pro products over the years. Uh, had an A5 come in the other day, something you don't see very often. Um, the carrier split on, but they will crack in that area. Um, there's certain parts on uh, auto fives that will crack. The bolts will crack on the new style bolts. Uh, uh, locking block uh, rails will uh, 
shear off, uh, but this uh, has a crack in the carrier, so we're going to have to replace that carrier. Well, this came in for a blue job, and we didn't catch that until we were putting it back together. If I'd have seen that, I'd have quoted a new carrier, but I didn't see it, so I'll probably just find a used carrier out of one of my scrap guns and replace that carrier. Uh, we got a uh, high power in the other day. Interesting. Uh, uh, this uh, gun has been grayed. And uh, interesting thing about this, I didn't gray this. Uh, it's just a man sold it to us, and uh, that's just uh, the way we took it in. I guess I bought this. I don't know. It's got some little freckles on it. It kind of need, needs to be grayed again, or else just leave it and sell it as is. But anyway, this gun, when this gun came from Browning, it was blued. Now, this was back in the days. I have the old invoice from a... Uh, uh, Hoffman's Gun Center in uh, Newington, Connecticut. Uh, this invoice is dated September 1st, 1976. That's probably, that's the date it was shipped back to this gun company. And uh, this was back in the days when you could special order about anything you wanted. This gun came from uh, the Belgium plant and it was blued. And the way things would work down in our shop in Arnold, Missouri, uh, the gun would come in blued, and uh, you could special order anything. And they would, if you, if you ordered this gun and you wanted it grayed, this gun would come into our uh, gunsmithing shop there in Arnold. It'd be blued, and they would uh, do a gray process on it, and they go play to the trigger, and uh, then the gun was sent out to you. So now you can, you can say that this gun was special ordered. Uh, a lot of guys take that to mean that it was special ordered and came in from Belgium. Uh, in a gray condition, that's not what happened. Um, it's like anything else. You could order a, a new Browning Auto 5, and if you want a recall pad put on it, stock shortened, ivory beads, whatever, you could uh, make an order back in those days, and they would take those special orders. The guns would always come in in, in original factory condition from Belgium, and then when they came to Arnold facilities, in, the, in our shop, we would uh, make the modification. That's what happened to this uh, formerly blued high power. It was grayed, and uh, interesting thing on the invoice, we charge about 300 and some odd bucks to gray one of these nowadays, and like 75 bucks to go play the trigger. Here's the price in 76 to regray this complete high power. It was $50. Gold plate the trigger, $7.50, and 249 with, with shipping and, and all the work, it was $59.99 done in uh, September of 76. So that's the story on special orders back in those days. You could kind of order about anything you wanted. Don't know if they do much of that anymore. Uh, haven't had much to do with the Browning uh, Arnold facility in the last 20-some years since I left there. But uh, that was the way things were back in those days. You could special order about anything you wanted. So that's about what we... That's what we've got going on this week in our little um, gunsmithing facility here, and I uh, thought maybe you'd find these things to be a bit interesting. I know I did. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with in the next couple of weeks. We'll have some new items come in, and we'll lay them out on our special table and talk about them.